Russian army rising. The church is the breathing grounds for raising godly men and women who are willing to apply kingdom principles and values to bring transformation to their respective societies. We need to have a national focus. We don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the Great Commission. They are equipped in righteousness. Unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know ABC and surprise others to do, but they don't do, unless we exceed that. We pray for God to raise right ministers in our nations. We pray for God to raise right task collectors. We pray for God to raise right security agents. Achoo, achoo. They are bold and fearless. Standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away and we don't quit for we know no defeat the agenda to possess the nations welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on pentecost hour stay tuned in, it's in my soul. hallelujah institution with kingdom values and principles influencing the chieftaincy institution with kingdom values and principles and beloved we've been doing this ministry the past 12 years and as my dear sister said this is the material we've been working with but we came together with a team to review the material we have added so many uh, issues into it and we have copies at the Oceani bookshop I may not be able to finish the slides that I have before me and the things I'm raising are all coming from this material, if you find a copy it will help you relationship between the Christianity and chieftaincy institution in Ghana has existed so many years. There had been a relationship between the church and the chieftaincy institution. I may be using the Presbyterian examples, 
So the examples will be coming from the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. One of our early missionaries called Reese was accommodated at Okrapong. The then Okrapihim gave him to a chief called Nanakwa Okutruku and this Obroni who had come to do missions lived with Nanakwa Okutruku. If you are at Okrapong, the fourth building on your left towards the palace that is the house where the missionary was accommodated. At Agogo, Ramsia, a missionary, was tired. You couldn't continue walking. The chief of Agogo, Nana Samwa, gave his paraquin to the missionaries and gave careers to carry this missionary to do his job. Uh, at Santia Chimbompata, there was nothing like a church the chief there called Anadakwa in 1888 went to Abetifi inviting missionaries come to my community to establish church. And now, especially the older churches, we have received land for our chapels and our, our schools and our hospitals. Some of the lands were given freely. What I'm saying about Presbyterian Church is the same with the Methodist Church, Freeman at Kumasi Menshia with Nanakwa Kudia. And you find that in the Catholic and the Anglican churches, they will all tell you the same stories. Church leaders have participated in traditional leaders' meeting. They have also attended our national programs and all that. Church leaders have visited them. Some have given gifts, Bibles, and prayed with them. Now, we have a traditional leader, Santiman Pohine, who is saying that, that royal family now is a Christian royal family. So you find even now royal families that are insisting that we are Christian royal families. So if you talk about the contribution of chieftaincy institution to Christian missions, we can talk about provision of hospitality. The chieftaincy institution over the years has provided hospitality to the churches, missionaries, the early one, they have provided lands. If you go to Kumasi, now from the Swami Ranabout to Wesley College to Mofretro to Wesley Girls. Now look at that stretch of land that they have given to Methodist Church. Why? Why? You alone. You've taken the whole land. You, it's the same. Presby Church, Presec, Ebri Girls, Kale Church, Anglican, let me talk about those of us, you know, because they gave us the land. We did not pay. So they provided us the land. In fact, those days, we did not have security, police stations. So traditional leaders provided security for, for missionaries and church workers. And especially among the accounts. And the same, if a church accepts to sit in your program, it's a sign of authentic authentication that what you are doing is good. If you are in Kumasi and Asantehini decide to sit in your program, what he's telling Asantehini is that you are a good person. Those of you who are not having the churches coming to your meeting in a way they are saying that you are not a good church. Your church is not a good church. That's a signal they give to their members, the community. And some have literally given funds now, I'm using the Presbyterian Church. The influence that the Presbyterian Church has over the years had in areas of education, health, and agri. We are talking about influence. And let me start at the sectors, at the institutions that the churches over the years have had significant uh, contribution. And what I say about the Presbyterian Church is not different from other churches. As at now, when it comes to basic schools, basic primary uh, JSS, Presbyterian Church of Ghana has 2,000 basic schools across Ghana. You don't need to clap. Just wait for me. When it comes to senior, the Methodists can say the same thing. When it comes to senior high, 
Presby Church has 33 senior high schools across this nation, including Priscilla Cabri Girls and the others. They have four vocational schools, five colleges of education, five colleges of education, including PTC, Acropon, Abri Chebi, and the others. Five lay training centers, and the Presbyterian Church is the only church in Ghana that has two universities. Here we beat everybody, including Church of Pentecost. <laughs> Acrofi Christala belong to Presby Church, and then the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. And almost all the best second cycle institutions in Ghana belong to the churches. Wesley Girls, Infancy Pim, St. Roses, mention all the schools. All the best second cycle institutions in Ghana belong to churches. Health. Presby Church can boast of 57 health institutions, 5-7, including four district hospitals, one regional hospital. Agogo Hospital has been uh, raised to grade A. That is regional hospital. One primary hospital, one specialist hospital, four health training institutions, four. 21 health centers, 16 clinics. A Greek station. Don't clap because the Methodists are here. What we say, they can also say. The colleagues can say. In fact, when it comes to health delivery, apart from government of Ghana, the next one and the chart, the Church of Pentecost, you are also there. It's the Roman Catholic Church, even if it's not the Presby Church. The Catholic Church is ahead of all of us. But you go into some of the regions. For instance, Boko Presby Hospital is the only referral hospital in the whole region. Ghana government doesn't even have a referral hospital in that part of the country. Our Greek stations and all the others. Then these churches and all the mainline churches especially here, Church of Pentecost, all of us. In our schools, they have provided chaplains to influence our student and academic work. So chaplain in our schools, secondary schools, colleges of education, universities. Hospitals have chaplains. That even when somebody is about to die, they invite the chaplain to come and pray before the person will have a decent and a comfortable death. Security agencies have chaplains. When the military people are out there, in fact, in this conference, somebody sent me a message. It's like a university chaplain is sitting in this meeting and he has decided to be quiet. If you are still, he say you will see me during supper time. Just let me see, see you where you are hiding. So universities have chaplains. And security, military, when the military people are going out for war, when they kill people, they go with chaplain. And when they kill somebody and they are feeling bad, then the chaplain will tap their shoulder. Don't worry. Go ahead. Kill more. Kill more. Kill more. Mil Ghana Armed Force Chaplain General is a Presbyterian. Reverend J. Jain. When they are going to kill, he goes with them and he encourages them. Even soldiers who are going there, churches in Ghana have given them chaplains, encouraging soldiers to kill more. Police. Police service has chaplain. Reverend Chumba Methodist. And many more. Police people have chaplains. Whatever you say about them, they still have chaplains. Prisons. Until quite recently, the Ghana prison service chaplain was an apostle of your church. I saw him uh, one of these days. He's still here. Prisons. Condemned cells. Is there. Even people who have been condemned that they are about to be killed, they ask this man to go and comfort them. On and on and on. So, in Ghana today, in some social institutions, we have made them centers of worship, centers of conversion, centers of transformation. 
How did we do it? In educational institution, we gave them chaplains, we gave them chapels, regular church services. They do baptism even at the university. They do confirmation on campuses. At, at KN University, Church of Pentecost, you have acquired a place, you build a chapel, you have a pastor, and he's doing very well. So he's doing all the good thing on campus. That is why the campus have become centers of worship, centers of conversion. Health have become centers of institution, centers of worship, centers of conversion. Why? There are chaplains, regular devotion at hospitals. Prisons have become centers of worship, centers of conversion. People are converting uh, uh, in our prisons. You have a nice facility at Insawem. I serve at a uh, council member of Ghana prison service. And our, our brother uh, Wengman was chairman. And we are happy with what you have done. Some people are getting degrees from prisons because of that facility that Church of Pentecost you provided. They are in prison, but they are being transformed. Military have become centers of worship. Go to Bama Camp and we have Methodist Presby Church of Pentecost. Military centers have become places of worship. Police church, places of worship. Media, we are all preaching in media, TV, converting people. Friends, I want to ask all of you a simple question. Can the palace also become a center of Christian worship and conversion? This is the question we must ask. Can the palace also become a center of worship, a center of conversion? It's not easy when you are doing your yes, yes. There was this pastor, a traditional leader bought a set of instruments and donated to his church. And one Christmas afternoon, this chief requested the pastor to bring the instruments that he has donated to the church to the palace as he mobilized all the traditional leaders in his paramount area for worship. And this pastor told, sent a message to the chief that the things now you say when I ask you can the palace become a center of worship you say yes yes but a colleague pastor has told a traditional leader that the things that we use to worship God we can't send them to the palace so today I'm asking you and all church leaders and Christian community in Ghana what, why, why, why we have made schools, military, police, prisons, other sectors, social institutions, we turn them to places of worship, places of conversion. How come that the palace has not become a place of worship, a center of conversion? And let me tell you one thing. There are calls and calls upon traditional leaders to churches to send worship to their palace. 1941, Nano Foriata invited a church to send people to his palace to worship. 1960, send requests to a church, send me missionaries, send me chaplain. Worship with us in the palace. As I speak to you, the requests are still outstanding. Kebuzia 1955 challenged Christian Council. Reach out to the palace. We are not there yet. I've heard another Doma, Nana all requesting that church come and worship with us. We are not there yet. So now I'm asking you, can the palace become a center of worship and conversion?
salvation? If not, why? I'll come back to this issue. But there's another area. Before missionaries, colonial authorities, merchants, these are the three groups that visited our country. Traditional leaders were in charge of socioeconomic development. Chiefs were responsible for prosperity, growth, health of their communities. Then the colonial authorities came. British, they introduced what they call indirect rule and used our chiefs as middlemen. And during the struggle for independence, you may remember that, you see, 19, between 1940 and 1951, that was the period that they introduced indirect rule. But towards independence, you may remember, it was reported in the evening news, 5th January 1950. Kwame Nkrumah then made a statement and I'm quoting from him. He says, those of our chiefs who are with us we do honor. Those who join forces with the imperialists, there shall come a time when they will run and leave their sandals behind them. In other words, chiefs in league with imperialists who obstruct our path will one day run away and leave their stools. Now that simple statement that President Krumah made came to reality in 1958, a year after independence, when Osajifu Oforiata II was disturbed by government. And it's not only Onana Oforiata. Many chiefs at Achimabuakwa were these two, not only Achimabuakwa, Ejusu, Insuatre, Ofensu, Tetrem, so many chiefs, government, sack all of them because of their connection with the British or the colonial authorities. I don't have much time, but if you want to discuss the Chieftaincy Act, Act 759, our chiefs need help. And I will explain. I live in Kumasi. When the roads are not good, you hear people shouting, Diana Sante in the air. Kumasi are crying yet, or two for a day. Kumasi were ho, a jimmy new ho. So you hear people on radio with high expectations on traditional leaders. Why are you not doing it? It's not only Kumasi. It's in Accra. It's in Volta region. Traditional leaders. High expectation. Why are you not doing this? People think some of the things they were able to do before the arrival of the colonial authorities, traditional leaders can still do that. Let me tell you. At the moment, it's painful to say it. If there's a traditional leader anywhere listening to me, I'm sorry. But district chief executives are even more powerful tra than traditional leaders. MPs have MP common fund. District chief executives have common fund. Assemblymen, assemblymen, assemblymen have common fund. According to the Chieftaincy Act, there's no resources allocated to any chief. If you find any chief, any part of this country, you know, affecting development, it's his own pocket. The government of Ghana, and even those with royalties, the percentage is something. But what about even those of us that we don't have natural resources to attract royalties? So citizens are going to them, give us development. They don't have what it takes. And and that is why 
Anytime you hear a chief saying that me name and crop for you bet twelve mamu eighty percent at Nehuna Chirin. Say oh he knew was the cow to me a developing and crop for can't catch that politician be asked or bet twelve mamu eighty, but they need help. They need help. They don't have access to resources. So they are forced to become beggars. But this is where the church must come in. The politicians will come and go, but the church will always be there. We will always be there. And the traditional leaders will always be there. So in this country and for our future, the church must seek a very strategic partnership with traditional leaders to develop this country. We should not wait on the politicians. Traditional leaders are begging them. Now the more they beg them, they corrupt them. But we the church, we, 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 don't, we need lands, but we will not corrupt them. This is the time that there must be strategic development between the church and the palace. But take your Bible. Me, I can talk and talk and talk. But I want to be a good boy. Let us read number one. Colossians chapter one, verse 15 to 17. Colossians. The Son, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Verse 16. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, all rulers, authorities, all things have been created through him. And for him, she knows thrones no see in Konya in Konya extremely skin. Now Colossians is saying that all the sikeja, the jeteja, all the black stools, they are for Jesus. Now I want to praise God. No, we praise God. No, we saw him feel our own We have created a gap between the church and the palace. If we are rediscovering what the church in Ghana needs today is to begin to rediscover new missions and new ministries that truly, truly will make the thrones belong to Jesus. But let me read the last one. Let's read Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 to 24. And if you have a Bible, I like the style of Apostle Nyamiche asking all of us to stand up and read. I've taken that from you, sir. Let us all stand up and read. When I go to my church, I also do it. When they ask me, where is this coming from? Say, go to Church of Pentecost. You see it. Let's read the church. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are his temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is his light. Read. No, 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 no. Don't read. Don't clap. We should cry. Read the second time. Read 
and reflect on what you are reading. Now, take your seat. Queen Elizabeth is dead. When they are going through the entrainment process of the new king, they say he's the defender of the faith. King Elizabeth will be buried in the cathedral. She's defender. I've been to Westminster, Lambert Palace. They've sent me to you know, the cathedral down there is a, it's a cemetery for royals. So, Bible is saying that, and we are talking about heaven, that he's talking about the people who have been saved, who are going to heaven. And John is saying, there's no light in the city. The glory of the sun radiates. But in this glorious city, John is saying, that the nations, all of us, will come to walk in that glory. And it is in Revelation 21, 24, that specific group of people have been mentioned that they are also coming. Bishops, your name is not there. Bishop. Bishop is, chairman, your name is not there. Apostle, your name. Kings, the kings, the kings, the kings, check, the kings. Mama Mwahimfo, do when you yam beba. Gan Hansuna, prison cra, ya dani ho center of worship. A him fee, a jama busson for. People that God has not disqualified have been disqualified on our land. Let me ask you, Queen Elizabeth, Chrono Abekomo and our uncle, keep that verse on the screen. Keep that verse. Heaven. Queen Elizabeth, those who will bring their splendor. Queen Elizabeth, or the splendor, back on our uncle, ready go. Will Queen Elizabeth go with her splendor? She will go or she won't go. She's the defender of the faith. Whether you like it or not, Anglican will tell you she is going. Denmark has a queen, queen of Denmark. Abeko have you now, uncle? Ready go. When other chiefs are bringing their splendor into these glorious cities, will the chiefs, kings, and queens of Ghana will they be there? We must say this in tears. We must be worried as a church in Ghana. In fact, K. Buzia will say that the palace is the heart of Ghanaian culture. And churches, until you touch the hearts, Christianity in this country will never be deep. And he tells us that the church will remain a whole war. No, no, no. But this is a nyak akumanoa. Ni ya ya insani na inuwe juma. Kristo sumu wagana ha. E ya ni inti tete te. Na se zi amu nina mo kase. People have believed. But they are not repenting. Mumi ya nshe se. If we have been able to affect. Na monshe. O hini ba ku kwa asore ya. Iti kumase. Na da rumo tu mfu wa kwa asore ya. Ni osu ni insafu wa. Ni osu mpabu wa. Because 
Chiriya empie. Nsafwa empie. Mwushi nipe wa hinsia. Ye diangro. If Pentecost by grace is asking us to rediscover ministry, one of the things that we should not leave this place without building a passion, vision for is what do we do with the palace. And thank God, Church of Pentecost, you are doing very well. For those of you who don't understand, here if you want to clap, clap. My brother Vincent is there. They started mission to the palace ministry to chief some few years ago. In fact, it was inaugurated just last year. But the rate, they are inaugurating and the joy. They've been running their royal conferences here. And how they come with the splendor and they, they bow and they worship. Call for the tips. These people are hungry. They are waiting. But we are saying that they don't belong. Like the pastor who is saying that the things that we used to worship God cannot be sent to the palace. Church, we have a ministry to rediscover. Just be your field. Just be on your field. Friends, me, I said stop your clapping. Revelation is saying that God won the kings and the queens to bring their splendor. There are some ministers who are already there, like I mentioned, Church of Pentecost, and now they have a whole of my hine, Yeji, my hine, is the chairman of the committee, and he loves the ministry so much. Yes, yes. Look at some of the pictures. And cheese from Volta region, cheese from north. In fact, a brother told me that even a chief came from Burkina Faso, Burkina and Ivory Coast, and they have sent this ministry that you inaugurated last year to Burkina Faso. And I have 3,000 pastors here and they don't have a passion for the palace. They don't have vision for the palace. They don't have fear. Beloved, the Lord wants people in the palace to come to him with their splendor. Adam Reku, let's sing the song again. If you are here and you want, we will help you. I'm here. I've been doing this at Kumasi Menshia the past 12 years. And Church of Pentecost is doing that. If with what I'm saying, you want to be helped to do ministry in the palace so that the chiefs, the kings can go to heaven with their splendor. Walk towards me. Walk towards me. Walk towards me. If you don't know how to do it, don't worry. We will help you. Vincent, come. If you want to go home and do ministry, come, come join us. Come. Come, join us. Join us. Oh, hallelujah. Join us, join us. The kings will come.
of us have already made up our mind that they, they worship God. But there's a difference between chieftaincy and abusun. Some the two are not the same. Leadership, chieftaincy is leadership. Abusun is religion, worshiping of deities. The two are not the same. I have been doing this with this material I mentioned the past 12 years. I've gone to Bermu, I've done so many things. We can do it. But I'm going to ask Apostle Vincent to pray. After this conference, wherever you find yourself, if you need help, the Church of Pentecost has started. They have all the areas. Uh, but you also don't need to become a Church of Pentecost person to do mission. We do student ministry. We don't need one church to do mission uh, ministry to the palace. Like we do in our schools. Methodist is doing it. Catholic is, they, everybody is doing it. So I'm not by that saying that all of us should join Church of Pentecost. But I'm saying if you don't know what to do, then because the Pentecost, in fact, Presby Church, we are also doing an Ashanti region and in some regions, call for help. But we can do it. We can do it. Lift up your voice to the Lord. Call for help. 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 We must rediscover this ministry. Call for help. Call for help. We must win this battle. 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 We must win this battle for the Lord. Lord, give us the palace. Lord, give us the palace. Lord, give us the palace. I ready for him fear to me. I ready for him fear to me. I ready for him to me. I ready for him to me. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we are most grateful to you this evening. Amen. We want to thank you for the fact that you have revealed to us an aspect of mission that is unaccomplished. Father, we come before your throne of grace praying for forgiveness of our sins for neglecting the palace. We want to thank you that, Lord, you have given us an opportunity to rediscover this aspect of ministry. Father, we pray and commit our brothers and sisters into your hands that as we stand before you, Father, we need grace. We need wisdom. We need knowledge. We need insight into palace ministry. That, Father, you prepare your people and grant them power so that as they go, they will be unleashed into the palaces to go and make impact and exploit. Father, we pray that, Lord, we commit all the palaces in Ghana and even beyond into your hands that you use these people. Father, we say, use these people. Father, we say, use these people to go and minister to their hearts. So that by the turn of this century, we will see a large number of people coming to you because all the nations and all the people and everything in this world belong to you. Now, receive the anointing. Yes, sir. Receive the grace. Mm. Receive the power of God. Receive the spirit of evangelist. And receive the spirit of missionary. So that as you go, go and impact the palaces. Through your ministry, let the great chiefs put down their crowns and come before Christ to say that we acknowledge the Lord God Almighty and he is our savior. 
receive this. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now we pray and commit our dear Father, our brother, open it into your hands, Lord. Refill him so that whenever he stands, he gets more than this. Make him an ambassador to the palace. Amen. And then let him preach and speak your oracles wherever he goes so that he will impact the Christian community in this nation so that we will all come together to form the chieftaincy ministry and at the end, glory and honor shall be ascribed unto your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.